People don't know what the hell a Nike is. What's a Converse? NBA All-Star shoe. There's nothing cool about Nike. I'm willing to bet my career on one guy. For a rookie? Yes. Who's never set foot on an NBA court. That's the literal definition of rookie, yeah. Ben, I would love for you just to paint a picture for me. So you sit down with Jordan before any of this. I'm just so curious about how that initial conversation changed or even informed the way that you approach this film. A, this is a person with the ultimate authority on the story. Uh, even though they don't appear in it, it exists kind of around it. It's about people uh, around him at the time. Nonetheless, I just wasn't gonna do it if he didn't want me to, to flat out, period. And after that, it was like, yeah, I gotta change stuff. I gotta compress it into a movie edit. You know, it's not a documentary. I'm not trying to get every dot, every I across every T. I'm trying to create a kind of inspiring sort of fable. But what's important to you? And I, very tellingly, he talked about the importance of his of his mother and the decision, in which really steered me towards redesigning the entire movie to gear around Viola Davis as a character, because also he told me it had to be Viola Davis. <laughs> Chris, you know, like I, I write down notes when I'm watching a movie and I actually have like a, a whole notebook, but I just kept going back and I kept writing, Chris Tucker makes everything better. Yeah, that's the truth. Thank you. Being on this set, was it as different and as special as it feels from watching this? Yes, yeah, it was something I never experienced before. You know, uh, Matt and Ben, they total control over everything. They were the boss, you know. They came to me, to my trailer, and was like, hey man, we just having fun. It's like friends having fun. We get, we don't figure it out, we'll figure it out. A lot, a lot of love on set. Chris being modest, the way the boss was like, Chris, do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> I need the greatest basketball shoe that's ever been made. Who's the player? Michael Jordan. I want to go to a line that Sonny says. He kept talking about how, like, in 20 years, he had never had a feeling like this, and it was about a then-rookie Michael Jordan. When did that feeling hit you with this film? It felt that way every day at work, you know? As I was watching the other actors, I'd finish a scene and go up to Ben and be like, I think that was really good. Like, that felt <laughs> really good. And he'd go, yeah, that felt really good. And we were kind of guardedly optimistic throughout the shoot. Like, I think this is going really well. <laughs> you never know. I mean, I don't know. I want you to know you're not crazy. I left the set and I called like my manager and my agent. I, I don't know. I think it's really, I think it's really good. <laughs> like, it's, I felt great. Like, I, I felt great. Marlon, <laughs> I got to ask you, do you have a great Jordan story from before signing on to do this project? I, my brother knew Michael and because they didn't live in color and Jordan was a fan, so Damon and Michael were cool. One day, I go to the, uh, I take my nephew to the All-Star game and Michael Jordan is about to check into the game and he got up to check in and I yell, the Jesus Christ of basketball! And more, Jordan looked like, who the hell was that? And he saw it was me and just gave me that, that look like, you crazy. Then he went out and went to score like 38 points that quarter. Got a name for it? Air Jordan. I don't know. Seriously? Well, maybe it'll grow on me. Oh.